welcome to the recap of I don't know what what is the reach <laughs> I, I couldn't keep going with the Count Chocula <laughs> welcome we, welcome oh, I don't know oh, if, if oh, you we went to the yeah. conference 2024 I have no notes to crib here just, we're just going to go from memory I think yeah we're going to riff it. it lots of driving or at least for me <laughs> why is it <laughs> always you. why why am I always driving at every conference <laughs> I'm always driving. Why? Why, Why do can... I make these decisions? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, it might be cheaper for you to fly, just fly to the conference. Well, okay. Well, I'll rent a car and drive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All the... so it was like seven hour drive from you? Uh, It was, um, yeah, let's just call it seven and a half, eight. I didn't yeah, have to drive, yeah. drive a lot, and actually, it was good because I had a, I had a co-pilot with me, another uh, fellow Michigander architect that and friend of the show and podcaster and podcaster, yeah. and um, who owes us coffee owes me coffee yeah. that still owes you coffee, you know. So he doesn't even get a name shout out because he still <laughs> owes you coffee. Withholding, <laughs> you ain't got no name, coffee boy. <laughs> so, ouch, but. Uh, but it was actually that'll, good. That'll and then, teach him. And it was a it was a good conversation just about like you know architecture, state of architecture, state of the just things going on, all these kind of things, and you know gossips and rumors and all sorts of fun stuff. And it kind of helped the <laughs> the trip go by. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And it did a couple. Of, you know, he did some work, and I kept glancing over at him while he's trying to do work in the car. And looking at the kind of archaic ways that he's doing it, it's just like, oh, I'm having to renumber all of these PDFs. And he's doing it one by one. I'm like, what are you doing? It's like, there are tools Did out there. Did you have a lesson? Did you teach a lesson? I actually, was it, I was actually told him, I, was like, tool. I actually really told him, I was like, don't make me pull this car over and teach you how to do this in one second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that would have been appreciated. It would have if he had the right tools. He didn't have the right tools on his computer. So, you know, it just paid me to watch, to like glance over and say, why? Yeah. yeah. Well, why I mean, this is, this? this is the state of the industry. Like, everybody has just got to figure it out on their own and, yeah. and they don't know what they don't know. So. Hey, I'm going to project manage by Excel. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, exactly. why would you do that? But. People still do. People do. You know. Yeah. But okay. So you drove. I flew, and it yeah. was it was I, longer you, for me to get there than for say, you. <laughs> you you had a much longer time on your trip out. Yeah. I think you right. didn't you fly like Beaver Air or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, maybe the state. The, it, what is the state critter of Alaska? I don't even know. I, I, I flew Alaska oh, Airlines. Yeah, flew. But you yeah. had to get like a biplane from your local. Um, right. You had to fly back in time to get the Wright brothers to fly you from that one to. It was a crop duster. Exactly. Yeah, crop duster. Uh, <laughs> actually, and they, so you flew from your local to Seattle, right? Yes. And then Seattle to DC. Yep. Um, so it was. Was it longer to get from? You were local to Seattle than it was from Seattle to DC. <laughs> oh, boy, were my arms tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Super, super short to Seattle. And then uh, beautiful. It was just beautiful up there. And then flying. I, I just worked the whole way. So, I mean, that is one benefit to being a passenger, right? And not being behind the wheel of a, of a car. Yeah. I didn't get to talk to anybody though. I mean, I was I was editing videos and stuff on the airplane the whole time. But what well, can't people oh, well. just stop and relax a little bit? Why does everything have to be up? <laughs> Ooh, look! It's I an did that on the way back. Work. I did that on the way back. So yeah, because I was you, like, literally flew at missing time working. I was missing time working. Uh, I had to get some stuff done so that as soon as I got back, I could publish it. But. um but yeah, on the way back, because yeah, we, I left super early, which you were gracious to take Brett and I to the airport. I'm familiar oh, with, oh man. I'm familiar with how early you left. Yeah. Yeah. I know you are. 
Uh, and then uh, I just I didn't hardly get anything done on the way back. I tried to sleep and I I just tried to look out the window as much as I could and see what I was. Flew right over Yellowstone. I oh. actually saw Yellowstone. The, Did you think- what do they call the falls there? I mean, it's like the great. Is, they call it like the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. It's just I guess it's Yellowstone yeah, okay. Falls. There's like an upper and a lower, but it was raging and it it was gorgeous. So that yeah. that was pretty cool to see. That's cool. I yeah. I wish. Yeah. I haven't been so get I got back back into Seattle on the way home and I didn't realize it you know there's time changes and like three hours difference right so my phone hadn't updated yet and they come on after we landed the the pilot comes on the intercom and he says well they're making us wait here to get to a gate and to add, you know we, we're already half an hour late to add insult to injury they're gonna make us wait and I'm like what we're half an hour late like like we took off on time. <laughs> we did not take off late. So, so for some reason, it was a slower flight than they were expecting. And then I was just like, okay, from from Seattle to Medford, how many flights a day are there? There's two. <laughs> One of them at the time that was literally like 30 minutes away from us landing now. And then the other one was 12 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I do not want to. I do not want to spend twelve hours in the airport today. That would be yeah horrible. So, anyway, <clears throat> somehow it all worked out. I don't know how, but I made it. Made it back on the right flight at the right time, and and it was it was great because I when I got home it wasn't even one p.m. yet because when you travel back in time when you're going east to west and that's that's actually really nice. I always uh, like going this direction. I don't like going like that direction. I, I'm always, looking I, stayed, I don't like going over there. I stayed in the same time zone <laughs> from yeah. DC to Detroit. However, the the times that I kept like, okay, if we leave here, I'll get back in this time. If we leave this time, we'll do this. People are like, Oh, but this person wants to do that. Well, all of that was out the window because on our way back I was kind of scrolling through uh, Facebook and one of our friends that we met up with on the trip, Scott Thrift, he gets a name. He gets a call out. Coffee Boy does not. (laughs) (laughs) Which which was also with me, which was also rode back with me, but still no name. Right. But anyway, so (laughs) he had posted, happy birthday, Frank Lloyd Wright. And I think I'd mentioned to you or to a couple of other people and another friend of ours suggested to take you know you out to the Pope Leahy house. And I was just yes, like, oh, yes. this would be kind of cool. Let's go celebrate Frank Lloyd Wright's birthday. Let's go out to- On his birthday. You know, yeah, on his yeah, birthday, cool. let's go out and visit. And so I check, and, I, and so I reached out to a couple of people who said, hey, are you interested in just kind of doing a real quick drive by to the Pope Leahy house? And they're like, oh yeah, that'd be great. Let me check my time, this, that, and the other. So I, it, didn't really turn into a big thing. It just, I took two people out there, um, Coffee Boy and Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to keep driving that hole. But, right. Um, and, but I was just like, well, I went online to see if I can get tickets for a tour, but it says it sold out. It wasn't sold out, but they were having a birthday event. And so when we get there, they're like, oh, are you here for the birthday event? And we're like, uh, no, we were just kind of doing a drive-by to go take I'm a look I'm shaking my at head it. like, yeah, we're here for the well, birthday event. We should have. <laughs> well, but they were like, and I was like, I didn't know that. There, I went online and saw that all the tickets, oh, they like, oh, we blocked them out. And if you want, just go up to the main house and get, you can get some tickets. The tickets are available. It was just kind of a walk up. And so we were like, okay, that's great. And so we went up there. Um and, and they're like, oh, and we're, we're having a Frank Lloyd Wright celebration. There'll be cake and all this other stuff. I'm like, cake? A tour and cake? Awesome. Wow. And this was the house Sweet. that every time I've gone there, which this is this is now the fourth or fifth time. I, I'm still kind of debating because my wife couldn't remember if we went to like my own drive-bys. And then she keeps saying that we went three times with her just because, because, just because. So we go there and, um, of all of the times you can't take interior photographs and all of the times I've paid for tickets. So I go up there and I'm looking at the ticket prices and all that other stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. And then they say, well, you know, um, 
uh, active duty military is free. I'm like, active duty military, is it uh, also open to veterans or is there a veterans discount or anything like that? And they're like, no, it's just active duty. And they're like, wait. And then she like pulls out a piece of paper, looks at it. She's like, oh, no, no, it's for veterans too. And they were like, so zero charge. And then I'm waiting for Scott and other person. Now he's going to be your yeah. other person to, uh, um, <laughs> you know, to, you know, it's just like, well, you know, how much for them? And they're like, oh, no, no, it's veteran and party. And so like, I get them in for oh, wow. free. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. So, you know, it just saved everybody. I think it was like 45, it would have been 45 bucks. And so I just saved everybody 45 bucks to do that. Oh, uh, could yeah. they have like purchased something for me at the gift shop as a thank you yes, gift? They, they could, could have. have, did they No. but, um, <laughs> actually what was great, put, the, put, put your ticket money into my hat. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But what was, what was great tickets. is, um, it was like a, it was a great event. They've really done nice work in the restoration of this and there's just ongoing restoration. The docents were amazing, chock full of information. What was interesting is the house that I don't know if I've, why well, I don't know if I've said it on the recording, but that I kind of went to, I got a private tour of a Frank Lloyd Wright house. Right, the week right. yeah, I think you did talk basically about that. the Sunday yeah. before I left for the, the conference. Oh, right, right, right. And, and the Pope Leahy house and the, um, Gosh Winkler house. And if I'm, I'm pronouncing at least the first name wrong, probably, um, they, they're like basically in the series of Usonians, they're right next to each other. So the Gosh Winkler house had come first or at least was built first and then the Pope Leahy house. So there's a lot of, they're twins, Usonian twins, I get it. And it was really interesting to see those. And because I had this private tour and there's a, it's a private owner and they're trying to do their, a lot of research on the restoration process and working with the conservancy and all of these other things. Here I am, I'm, and oh, well, if I'm allowed to take pictures, I'm going to start taking pictures for this guy and taking all of this, like precedent images like, Ooh, this is, look, they did the, you just opened up your corner windows and they've got like the corner doors that, that form mm -hmm. a corner. Mm -hmm. And there's, there was missing weather on his doors. There's miss, missing weather stripping and sill like the threshold and all of this other stuff. And so I was taking pictures of the threshold and the weather stripping and all that other stuff to send to him and say, Hey, this is mm -hmm. what you're supposed to look like. So it was kind of cool working <laughs> So I guess in a way, paying it forward, this guy like gave me a free tour. So, you know, I, I reimburse him by taking pictures of details and stuff, but everybody had a great time. Nice. And so here it is like the leave time is getting further and further away here. I was yeah. supposed to leave like four hours earlier and here I am four hours into it. And I'm, then I just kind of like, I glanced over at, um, you know, Scott, so how like he you know, the, the stuff that he posts and the interest that he has about like military, yeah. uh, and Americana and Frank Lloyd Wright and all of this other stuff. So I was just like, you know what, we are six minutes away from the, you know, the national museum of the U S army. So I was like, you know what, let's go there. Too. Let's extend this trip like, even longer. Let's extend this trip. So here I am, I was shooting to leave between 9 AM, 10 AM. And when everything was said and done, we left at 6 p.m. and got back at 2 a.m., which was just two hours um, away from being awake for 24 hours because you guys woke me up at 4 a.m. to take you right. to, <laughs> to the airport to Dallas. Jeez. So, um, And here we are. We're starting our recap. Of the AI convention on the last day. We haven't Not even talked about day. it. We haven't even, Actually, yeah, well, maybe. we haven't even talked about the, all of this yeah. that we've talked about is just getting there and getting back. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and not the actual event we itself. We haven't even talked about. So the event itself, we'll, we'll just spend five minutes on that, right? Yeah, Because sure, the sure. good stuff happens before and after the conference, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Because I do have another good story. <laughs> Although it was at the convention. You've heard all this. Right. You, you know this story. But we'll. Well. I want what, go ahead. No, no, I want you yeah. to go with your chronology first, and then because mine was oh. I think 
What was yeah, it? a little different. I because I spent the first day. I spent the first day in the technology and architecture practice symposium. Node. And yeah, <laughs> so, me and two hundred other people. <laughs> people who actually make the practice work. Cormac. Mm. Okay. <laughs> We'll go with that, yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't want to take anything away from them. You're right. Actually, you're right. <laughs> we're all we're all we all contribute. Yeah. Uh anyway, I mean I, I guess I'll have more to say about that probably on, on my other podcast. It it was probably too too boring for this this show. But um the the it, it was a, it was a good symposium. I want to give them credit. It was great to hear from the there was three different there were two keynote speakers and a panel. And they were all talking about, mostly about AI. Um, I mean, and kind of, actually, I, I don't remember the name of Phil Bernstein's talk, but it was something about like, <laughs> AI is a mess, but so is architecture, right? And and so and so, how is it going to, uh, how, what's going to happen there? I think it's kind of just really interesting mm-hmm. to watch how things are playing out um, and, and really deriving value from, but also creating more value for architecture or, or the the big the big thinking behind behind what he's talking about yeah but after that we went to the the uh the party right was, uh, it was the, the party. that was the opening night party that which well, was we did a lot of like you know was just, it really a party we did a lot of like <laughs> walking around touring because you know, yeah so again again let's talk about non-conference stuff non-conference that was stuff is stuff. we did a drive-by walk but then kind of went into Mies van der Rohe's Martin Luther King Memorial Library in D.C., yes, which was right across the street from the opening event, which was at the Natural National Portrait Gallery. But since we were there and we had time to kill, we went in there and looked at both Mies' work, but also the more recent renovation and mm-hmm. fantastic renovation. I think they did a great job to extend the life of this mid-century masterwork. But it was interesting to look at the Mies part of it and not the, the new part is like separate in my opinion, because I've just went, I just went to the Farnsworth house, just went to 86880 Lakeshore Drive in Chicago and all these other things on a trip that we haven't talked about, but will in a coming episode for my big, like epic Midwest architecture tour. And, um, it's interesting to just see how he grasped a hold of a concept and just kept going with it. Like it was like, like building after building, building after, after building. building after building. Yeah. And although I did learn, however, how to spot the really, really Mies detail versus the kind of either like Mies transition to, was it HOK or SOF? that kind of started to pick up the mantle of like that, that Miesian type approach, but mm-hmm. like, you know, how the details started to kind of like change and not become very strict Mies to very Mies, um, people who work for Mies, um, mm-hmm. and train, you know, were trained by Mies or in how they carry down the mantle of doing something very similar, of so very Miesian but not Mies. And there is a big, t- yeah. I, I, I learned on this trip and learned walking next to this and you and me and everybody else who was walking around, looking at a building and taking pictures of details and having people look at yeah. us like, what is wrong with these people? Typically. <laughs> okay. So this was the second masterwork that I have experienced on the trip, right? Because I landed at Dulles ah, airport, yes. right? And yeah, yeah. And so within 24 hours, okay, so compared to where I live, there's nothing, literally nothing here like that. And I had already been in two incredible places. And and I, I, I kind of agree with you about like, the renovation feeling very separate. It, it didn't feel out of place. No, 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 no. But it wasn't Mies. It yeah. wasn't Mies. And I and I appreciate that. Yes. Like you shouldn't have to be forced. I don't. If if you get hired to renovate a, a an old building that needs help, you don't need to stick with the principles of the original architect. Right. That doesn't seem right either. Um, I don't know, actually, I've never done a project like that. So I'm sure, I'm sure that could go many different directions, yeah. but it is, it is interesting walking in the front doors of that into the lobby. Yeah. 
that lobby was massive. It, and it, and it's like, not only is it just massive in square footage, it's massive in height. And it's got the, you know, the grid ceiling yeah. with the lights. It's like fluorescent tube lights. I'm, they're probably not fluorescent anymore, but I, I'm like thinking back to when this was in its prime. Right. And, and it was just, it was like the office setting of the pristine cube of a space yeah. that you walk into with a little desk in the middle where they, you were going to go get help to send you to it's, which wing yeah, or which like, floor to go to but it's just so big, massive incredibly space, massive little you know little like you know, things little just, desk hello hello hello, hello. <laughs> Tim, you, you, this is about the building and the space this yeah. is not about the diminutive little people who have to work here exactly it was <laughs> you know and i remember you made a comment it's like man this thing goes on forever but what it was is like you sit and you, you know, you're in this big, massive double height space and you look to your left, which was kind of out towards the next building, but it, um, because of the reflections on the double height glass and everything yeah. else, it literally looked like it, it just, just kind of kept like on mirror. going. Yeah. Because, right. you know, yeah. when you turn to the right from when you entered into the door, it was kind of into the ground floor reading room and stuff like that. And so there was like, you know, light back, backlit, so it didn't absorb the same or you know give you that same kind of reflectance yeah. and so but it was right. it was like, like wow but but looking left it was definitely it's it was kind of this yeah this is this tells you whether it was intentional or not but this tells you what that building felt like when it was a true Mies building and not Mies plus yeah. and yeah i'm blanking on who did it i don't I, I have a feeling it might be QE, but I, I don't know and probably could look it up real quick, but we're in the middle of recording, which you're going to do anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, but but it was a great space. And then they transformed the roof deck of the, or, or the rooftop of this. And then they did an addition on the roof and really turned that whole upper, the roof to a rooftop plaza of green roof. It was really nice. Great views of the city. Real, real time update. We've got Mechanu and OTJ architects okay. are the ones who did the, the renovation. Okay. So. Okay. I do remember, I, yeah, I remember so, when there was a competition for who was going to go after it and there was a variety of top architects and stuff going after it. Um, so Mechanu is a Dutch architecture office. And it feels very Scandinavian, I would I, say. I, the, I would, the, the staircase that so that, nice. that we went up. They, they did a um, great job. There's a lot of steel yeah. in, in that uh, railing system. Yes. Two layers of steel mm. yeah. <laughs> guardrail yeah, with the, the white big, white oak yeah. twisting uh, guardrail. It, it was really beautiful. And then OTJ is uh, a New Orleans studio. So, yeah. Not locals. Let's just put it that way. Not locals. Not local architects. Yeah. But you know, yeah, the roof deck was it was incredible, yeah. and it's right across the street from the Steelcase Building slash Dollhouse. Yes, is how it looked to me. Yeah. Right, like you're looking over at this glass cube with all of the Steelcase furniture in it, very architectural and like really cool. But but it it because it was so transparent, it it literally felt like a dollhouse. The scale of it, like the, because of the distance and, it was away from us on the roof, it was like. It was like you could play yeah. with in real, Steelcase. And, little, and another real-time update, furniture. you kept calling it Steelcase, and it's Herman Miller. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. Once once something's in the brain, exactly. it's really hard to get it out. <laughs> so for yeah, any locals who are like, Steelcase Bill, what, what's Steelcase Bill? They don't sponsor the show. Yeah. It's okay. We can get their name wrong. But if you want to. Yeah, we'll take it. I, I, we'll I, take I it. can get paid by chairs. <laughs> we'll we'll work for furniture. We'll work for furniture totally. Um, okay, so after that, we went across the street. Finally, we started the our event. Yes, like the proper event. So we went to the National Portner, Portrait Gallery, mm -hmm. and so who who's the who's the architect responsible for covering the courtyard? Is it Foster? Yeah, it was and partners? Foster. So there you go. Yeah, okay, third third little master. Got one right. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, gorgeous space, gorgeous yeah. space. And and so kind of a, I would say kind of a weird opening party. I didn't, okay, so what I have to compare to, and I know you're sour about this, but I went last year mm -hmm. to the opening party 
And that was at the Exploratorium in San Francisco. And just total free reign, right? Free reign to walk wherever you... They have food stations and drink stations all over, multi-story, you know, Exploratorium with giant fish and birds and this, you know, I mean, it, it's... It, if you're aware of this project in San Francisco. Yeah, I heard about it, you know. I heard about it a lot with, you know, the this person who kept sending me pictures of, oh, look how amazing this is. Yeah, I'm not there. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. That was just a poke in the bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm measuring against. Yeah. This was like, okay, so first of all, I think I think one of the problems here was that somebody who worked there said, none of the galleries are open. You just have access to the courtyard space, which was not true. Right. And so it was like, we didn't even go look for quite a while to even see if that was actually the case. We just took their word for it, which was stupid. I mean, it would not make sense for the AIA to rent out just the courtyard space anyway. So I don't know why I believe that. But anyway, that that did, I think that kind of soured it right in the beginning and then when we went and finally looked, we did get to go through a little bit of, of the gallery space before we we called it quits and went to have dinner. Yeah. I will say that all of the hype that you guys put on the previous year's opening gala versus <laughs> really this didn't one was live up to it, did not. it? <laughs> I was just like and, and so I was like, How much did we pay for this? Seventy five dollars? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm bucks. staying here for 75 minutes. I want a dollar a minute of quality <laughs> time, you know. And then, and, and then here I am. It's like you get finger food. Please. You got this. And I will refrain from saying my comparison of how the wine tasted, but it wasn't good. It wasn't? No. Like you got a white wine. Right? Yeah. It was, it was remember, I, yeah. I let you taste it. You were like, <laughs> it, what it, the? It was bad. Yeah, not good. Yeah. And then, yeah. so I'm... My rationale, okay, living in D.C. for the last 14 years before moving, you know, we go to this all the, we went to that all the time. The kids used to run in the fountains and all that other stuff, which I wish the fountains were on for this event because they were just really cool. This to kind of have this like really paper thin kind of layer of water and, and all of that. I heard stuff. about that. Was it, was it friend, friend Michael, I think Erman was talking yeah, about that. Yeah, he was just yeah. saying like, it, it was really a different take on a fountain. It, yeah. Very architectural. Right. Right. Very architectural. Yeah. And, and so I was just like, okay, so I just paid for bad food, bad environment, um, people <laughs> like it getting really hot in there. Right. It started to get like stuffy. Um, well, you know, like, it was, I mean, yeah, the weather in DC, I, again, coming uh, from the West coast, okay. it was, it was sticky. Let, let's, yeah. let, let's give everybody a, a visual. Okay. It's hot outside. It's muggy outside. It's human outside. People are sweating. These particular people all wear black. So they go inside. They're all sweaty. They're all hot. They're all funky. And they... They're all funky. <laughs> and here we are now. There's a... All in this one contained area that when, when, we, first got, when we first got there, when it was practically <laughs> empty, was reasonably cool. But then slowly but surely, as it started to fill up, it started to get a little bit yep. stuffy and a little bit funkier. Yep. Um, funkier. And, even funkier. And so I'm like, okay. And so something that I could do for free, I'm paying for, and I'm not having fun because this yeah. guy, I don't know which direction I'm pointing right now, uh, said, oh, last time was fun. Lies. <laughs> Lies. No, it was true. It was true the last well, time. Well, last time could have been fun, yeah. but this was, <laughs> it was interesting, yeah. but you know, I mean, we got to see some people, uh, we got to walk around when we finally realized that the gallery was open, we got to at least walk around the gallery and, and, and see some of that could have done it the next day for free, probably could have brought, you know, right. like went and bought something from the, like some refreshment from the gift shop that was a lot cheaper. Um, and then $75. Yes. Yeah. And less yeah. funky. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be expensive to rent that space out and they had food and drinks and music and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's like, it, I mean, it, when you say like these buildings are just open to everybody to come, walk in for, for free because that's, okay. as taxpayers, yeah. that's what we, one of the things we pay for. Right. 
joy of this. Yeah, that, that kind of leaves a. Yeah, that leaves a uh, yeah a weird feeling. Yeah, yeah, like, n- non desirable. Like, man, the last time I came here, I had a backpack with filled with like snacks for the kids and all this other stuff. So, be sitting in that. I could have sat in that same place probably a few years earlier, with kids running around eating a Ziploc, eating out of a Ziploc bag of like Cheez Its and, and Cheerios, and drinking water, and had a perfectly good time. Yeah. Oh, Corvix, stop it. Oh. All right. So let's talk about the keynote, the opening keynote. So the next day. So the next day we wake right up and I'm jump. like, wait. So we're going to have some guy talk about happiness? Really? <laughs> well, opening keynote, right? And, okay, so talk about judging a book oh by my its gosh. cover, right? It's like, okay, so that's all you get. Yeah. That's all you get yeah. when you're looking at the program. I don't, if you don't know who Arthur C. Brooks is. You don't know who Arthur right. C. Brooks is. And come to find out, you know, author uh, teaches at Stanford Business School. No, is that Harvard? Where? Harvard, I don't even Harvard, know. But Harvard, Harvard Business, Business School. Yeah, he's East Coast. Yes. East Coast. And because uh, he, he, he was cracking jokes about the West Coasters yeah. and how Stanford's trying to steal all the professors from Harvard. And he, he talked about how... <laughs> Because he said that, that people in California are happier, but the taxes last forever, right? <laughs> was, so that was his. That was his. He was dogging on California, but he was he was basically talking about all, all we knew was he was going to talk about happiness, and I thought that was kind of a interesting, you know, uh, oh, room yeah. to address happiness in. <laughs> And, <laughs> right. Yeah. Our profession, I would not describe it as happy right. in any way. Right. I would say we struggle greatly with with happiness. And, and honestly, you know, you were sitting right next to me. It was a packed room, literally shoulder to shoulder. And I texted you. I was like, "I'm wrong. I'm wrong." Yeah, you Cause, did. Because <laughs> you couldn't just you couldn't just look. I mean, over I couldn't it. just look over and, and say, you know, "Hey, I'm wrong." You, could, <laughs> you had to you know, be on your. But phone. I but I texted you yeah, that I, I was wrong because. Oh my God! It was okay, but but before we got to him, let's talk about just a couple. Like there was there was could, there was a lead up okay. to get to him. Right, sure. he was not the first was not. thing that yeah. happened. And and I I think it's important to contrast what happened before that, leading up to his in the the presentation style mm-hmm. of AIA's leadership. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be specifically about the people who delivered the message. Yeah. It was, I, I really want to talk about the style in which the message was delivered. Mm-hmm. And I've lived through this working at a larger firm. Um, you probably have too, which is like there are some people who can talk in front of an audience. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who cannot. And the ones who cannot, who still have to, then need tools to rely on to speak in front of an audience. They tell. Oh my the goodness. Teleprompter like the teleprompter that when they said, um, when they actually called out, I, you know, everybody, can you please sit down? I can't, I can't read the teleprompter can't because the teleprompter. everybody's standing up in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know what to, I literally don't know what to say next. <laughs> right. Right. Because I can't read the teleprompter. Yeah. yeah. And, and it just felt really like, okay, so if you can't speak from the inside if you can't speak because you don't know what because you're so reliant on the tools mm-hmm. that is a not a good look for leadership yeah. to me i think it it's so so the way that i would describe it is like disney animatronics on a ride it was like it was even even the the body language came across and and i've actually had a communications expert come on my troxel podcast and we yeah. talked about communication skills of leadership yeah. and w- why it's so important this was not an example. This was not a good example of of that. It was it was just like you tune out. Imme- I tuned out myself. I tune out immediately because it's not authentic in any way. It's like and now I will read the words that somebody else wrote for me because those words have been vetted yeah. 50 ways from Sunday by a communications team so that we don't say any of the wrong words and they're all in the right order. And it's concise, and nobody's going to go off topic, and 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 the price you pay for that is authenticity, right? It's, Insert after and connection. Here. Ha, you ha, you, ha. yeah, right, right. <laughs> there, there's there's just no connection, yeah. 
with the audience when it you are literally reading from a script in front of that audience up on the stage. I would like to thank you real quick because you said, you know, Disney animatronics in right now. I have Carousel of Progress running through my head. It's a great, big, beautiful <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> New theme and song. now New everybody theme else song. who's listening to this who knows that now has it stuck in their head too. And you're welcome. Yeah. 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 And, and so I bring that up because I wanted to contrast it with the keynote yeah. by Arthur C. Brooks, which was freaking amazing. It was so well done. It was great storytelling. Yes. It was great pacing. It was totally on topic mm-hmm. the entire time. There was comedy thrown yeah. in. There was expressiveness. There was motion. And it was, you could just tell like, okay, number one, he teaches courses. Yeah. So he's probably very comfortable up in front of people. Right. And larger audiences, and he has no problem with any of that. And he's co-authored a book with Oprah. I'm sure he's been on Oprah's show and all. Yeah. So maybe he's just in a completely different league and has a different kind of a day job. And, and maybe he's just way more comfortable with it. But with with our expectation of what it was going to be and the message that he actually delivered was, on top of the method in which he delivered it yeah, yeah. was... It was Tremendous. like, oh, he saved the yeah, keynote. He, he saved the opening event yeah. <laughs> because it was that good. Yeah. It was it was really, really, really well done. I actually took some notes. Let me let me see. I, I'd love to hear what you thought about okay. that while I try to pull up these notes. Oh, I have to like fill in the do some filler. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta riff right. Oh now. well yeah. one of the interesting things that I had about it and, and I was I did take notes as well, but some of the things that I did is I like did a little bit of audio and I sent it off to my wife and it's oh yeah you were kind of just like recording it into a text message yeah. or something and, and just so that what she could was, hear a piece yeah, of it. it's just like god i wish you were here to listen to this because this is this is just amazing how mm. it was just it was literally just amazing and i and I, I think it was we started talking and he was talking he started talking about like happiness feelings and i don't know just like well, he, he drew a distinction. He was like, what is, like, let's define what yeah, happiness yeah. is. And I know we're not talking about architecture right now. But again, mm-hmm. it was kind of interesting to have this be in a room full of unhappy architects. Well, <laughs> and, and, and honestly, if anybody can just, like, take anything away from that speech and how he was talking about it. And I really think that let's let's... I, I have to I have to guess that he's given this before yeah. that we need and we'll need to find a link to whether it was a TED talk or whatever else to to put it in there because it was really it's just this this really interesting conversation about what makes you happy you know where where should you place your importance the things that bring you joy that bring you kind of meaning and purpose and all of these other things yeah. and if you break down like how we approach architecture, you can kind of define your career in the way that he breaks down happiness is like, all right, why are you, it's almost like, why are you doing this? And what about this alignment of happiness and alignment of like what you do is, you know, like what part of like what you do is part of this kind of you know, overall happiness. And I, I want to hear your notes because then I can kind of like, fill in because there was like those four key points that yeah i mean the the definition um that he said it's it's it, so so in the new book that he's co-authored co-authored with with oprah i don't know if you've ever heard of her um the definition is in enjoyment of your life satisfaction in your accomplishments and meaning in your life yeah. so enjoyment like the, this none of those things are like enjoyment, happiness is not enjoyment. It's it's all of these things. It's it, it's enjoyment, satisfaction, and meaning. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's and enjoyment is not pleasure seeking. And he re- he started to break down all of these things. And and I I think what really struck me was when he got to meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said he asks two questions. Because I don't want to go through his whole talk, but I think this is like the point most worth talking about is. What is meaning? Meaning is coherence, significance, and purpose. And it's two questions that you have to be able to answer, which are, why are you alive, Hmm. right? Speaking towards the the purpose part. 
and for what would you joyfully give your life for? Right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people can answer that very quickly and a lot of people can't answer it at all. Right, right, right. And, right. and that's, I think, what's so interesting. Those are pretty profound personal questions, yeah. right? It's not like anybody was trying to shout out their answer, right? I mean, some people can. They'll, they'll immediately mention, you know, their kids or, or whatever the, you know, who would you give your life for? I think that certain people definitely know who that would be and others have no clue who that would be. So to to me, that I thought that was kind of a, a really interesting point about meaning because I think a lot of people are looking for their purpose and they're looking for meaning in their lives, but this kind of helps you define yeah. what that actually is for yourself. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was tremendous. And yeah, waking up, waking up early, you know, trudging into DC, knowing that I'm going to deal with uh, DC traffic. I was already in kind of a, a little bit of a sour and, you know, probably thinking somebody's going to tell me to be happy. Don't they know? Don't they know? <laughs> you were the poster child for. <laughs> don't they know? You know? Don't they know? This. They're talking to a bunch of architects. Yeah. You know? Don't they know? Um, and yeah, totally. and oh my God, it was. I don't know necessarily if transformative is the right thing, right way to say, it, but it was, it was fantastic. It was eye opening. It was very much enlightening. I would love for it to be transformative. It was a, the right message at the right it was, time. It was very much it, the right message. And it right really time. did kick off the the conference in a really yeah. good way. No, a very positive absolutely. way to, to start things off. And, uh, you know, so yeah. Arthur, Arthur C. Brooks, definitely look him up. Um, he was he was amazing. Yeah. Yep. And, and really then that started kind of like rolling into the expo, meeting up with friends, meeting new friends. I had uh, the opportunity, our friend Brett and I had an opportunity when you were, I don't know where you were. We ditched you, I guess, and went mm. to the- I think it's the other way around. The, the Or that, or that too, <laughs> where we went to go to the Lake Flato discussion on design. Oh yeah. Yeah, which- Right. I, I am a great admirer of Lake Flato's work very familiar with a lot of the yeah. work that they did in North Florida. So, you know, this, this kind of like very amazing regionalism that they bring to a very, what almost feels like a making it up as you go along, but is so very sophisticated kind of approach to architecture that I don't know if what I just said is doing their work justice, but I've got a few monographs of theirs because I just really, really like their work. Same. And yeah, so. In, I'm into for it right, right now. Yeah. What's that? I'm not going to grab it, but I was just saying yeah. I have one of their books too, right, right over here, and I was yeah. just looking to see if I could catch a glimpse of it. But yeah. yeah. And and so everybody seems to know what is one of Cormac's favorite. Who is one of Cormac's favorite architects? Contemporary architects. And for those of you who don't, because I may not have preached enough about him. I am a great admirer of Brian McKay Lyons, architect out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, and just an amazing body of work, amazing interpret, another regionalist that is the Nova Scotian fishing village type of architecture in a very modern, very contemporary way, and just is inventive as hell on the work that he does. He's very much a kind of a Glenn Burkhead, um, not Glenn, uh, why am I blanking on Glenn from uh, Australia? <laughs> That's Is it right Glenn Burkett? Murkett? Murkett. I said Burkett. Murkett. I said Burkett. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So very much kind of in the same vein as like a Glenn Murkett. And so we're sitting there and getting nudged. He's like, hey, 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 there's your boy. And I'm like, what? What? You know, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> and he's like, there's, right. Bri there's Brian McKay Lyons. And I'm like, you sit up straight, like, you know, adjust my tie. Yeah. Jolt of energy. You know, Cause I have ties. Um, and, yeah, right. <laughs> and he walks in with Steve Ehrlich, another, my oh God, Steve Ehrlich kind of, you know, a uh, person. And so I'm like, all right, maybe after this, you know, I'll go up and I'll meet him, introduce him. I sort of briefly met him at the, um, 
when he was at Auburn, but it was like so quick and it was just like in a flood of other students at the time that it wasn't really one of these that you can really kind of consider meeting. It was just like, like quick shake hand, you know, nice work. And then kind of moved on. So I was just like, I, I want to meet the guy. I'm old enough now. You know, I, the, the butterflies will be gone. I'll, I'll go meet. Him. So then the talk kind of finishes up and then it was switching to Q and A and then they get up and they leave, you know, you're like, I, 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 but I wanted to, but I wanted to meet you <laughs> kind of thing as he walks past me uh -huh. and I look over and I'm like, well, there it goes. He's like, are we going? You know, our, our you know, our yeah. buddy's like, you know, <laughs> our, Brett's so, yeah. Brett is so yeah, good he's at like, this. So are we going? <laughs> are we going after them? Right. And, and I'm like, all right, fine, let's do it. I'm, I'm not going to chase these old men down, but I was just going to, once we got out into the, the court, the corridor out in the um, conference center, I'll walk up to and I'll beat them. So, but then as we're walking out, a friend of ours stops us. It's, I knew he was in the room, didn't know where he was, but he was in the pathway of like me getting to one of my architectural heroes. And so, but of course I'm not going to like, just, you know, eh, you know, bye, you know, kind of thing. I'd stop and I chat with him, but then I'm like, you know, Hey, I just, I want to go meet that guy. So get out into the uh, corridor, they're turning the corner. I'm like, do I like, you know, like kind of chase after him a little bit. So I like briskly walked, chase him down. So I kind of like briskly yeah. walked, turn the corner and realize they just went to the bathroom. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be that guy. I'll wait out here. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to be that guy. I will not. I'm not going to like follow them into the bathroom and, you know, say, Hey, right. how you doing? You know, like anything new these days? He's like, I'm going to the bathroom, you know? So I kind of waited yeah. and paid off. It was awesome. I, I had an opportunity to meet, to kind of like re re meet Steve Ehrlich because I did meet him at an MDC. Amazing guy. Then very gracious and amazing guy at the AIA conference. And then of course, here was my dilemma. I was like, I really like you, Steve. I've got a handful of your monographs on your work as well. And any other day I would be gushing over talking to you and like your body of work and how I've used your work as a, as precedent studies for some of the things that I've done in the past. But no, because Brian McKay Lyons is standing there and I'm just like, yeah, I don't. So anyway, it's it just, it's like, and so I was, he was talking to him and what a great person. I mean, he was just like, it's great to hear that like my work inspired you and all this other stuff and that you really appreciate my work and, and everything else. And I kind of told him the story of why, like for some weird reason, like Nova Scotia speaks to me. And it's not a weird reason because my family immigrated from Ireland to Nova Scotia. They, we didn't come in through, we didn't immigrate to America through, through Ellis Island. In fact, actually my grandfather. So like when my great grandparents immigrated to, from Ireland to North America, it was to Canada. My grandfather was born in Canada. So we were Canadians before we were Americans and, and, mm. and lived in Halifax. And my grandfather was born not too far from where. Brian McKay Lyons works and told him that story. He's just, that's great. He's like, and then said, it's always been a bucket list to come up there and, and kind of just visit the area, reconnect with my roots, if that's mm. a odd way of putting it, but reconnecting with my roots and then just going and checking out your work. He's like, oh, if you are, please look me up and we'll like, I'll take you around, show you around, like show you all these things and, and even invited me to come out to the farm. And I'm like, nice. That's awesome. And then I look over and, and literally I look over Ray right where you said, come out and you can come visit the farm. I look over at Brett and Ken and I was just like, see you guys later. I'm done with the con convention. I'm going to the farm. <laughs> just, and, uh, you know, Steve nice. and, and, uh, Brian were it. just like chuckling. Um, cause when I said, so, well, the first time I had actually met you, you know, Brian was like, you were a visiting professor at Auburn. He's like, oh my God, Auburn. That was so long ago. And I'm like, grab my beard and I'm like, hence the gray hairs. And Steve Ehrlich kind of like did one of these things. He goes, yeah, it happens to us all. Cause he's like stark white yeah. hair. I was yeah. just like, yeah. 
say, this is cool. I'm having a little bit of a, I'm having a moment here. And so really from that point on, I was just like, this, uh, this is going to be a good, I don't care what else goes on in the event. I don't care if I do anything else. My AI convention was made. Nice. I think you just called it an AI convention, no, AI which it might AIA. have been. <clears throat> it might have been. Okay. So. <laughs> a real well, convention. I, I, yeah, cool. I felt artificial at that time, so I was like, pinch me. Yeah, right. I'm meeting That's this guy cool. who does really, cool. really good work. It was funny as there was this uh, TV show, I believe, on Netflix. It was like World's Most Amazing Houses or something like that, where these, you know, people, these, this, this team of a realtor and an architect visit all of these different houses throughout the world, like these amazing homes. And one of them was Brian McKayline's two Hall house. And this, the architect was, you know, big fan of, of Brian McKayline. So he was just like, I hope this isn't one of the cases of don't meet your, don't meet your heroes because they'll let you down kind of thing. And it wasn't cause it was, he was just like gushing over how amazing this, this thing was. And I was just like, I hope it's not one of these things where I go up and I try to meet this guy. And he's just like, oh, don't talk to me, peasant. He wasn't. <laughs> he's like, who are you? Why are you talking to me? Leave me alone. I mean, they were so, they were nice. They were gracious. They were very, very cool dudes. Um, that Like real they people. Were real, they were real people. Yeah. Architects can be real nice. people. What, what happened after that? I don't even remember. I don't remember I know we anymore. went, we spent some time on the expo floor, we did. but I guess your highlight already happened. Well, so you, you were actually, just kind of floating well, actually, it was good that. as we, you know, kind of met up with people like when the company, uh, we, we, you know, had, we just recently had, um, the structures company, Scott from structures on the show. And we kind of met up with like oh, the, right. the parent company of all of that and met some pretty good people about right. like what's going on and in their industry and they invited us to dinner really really nice dinner too right that you had to you had to nice. ditch out on because i, I had another you had dinner. another dinner yeah uh, right it was it was nice like the see i i spent most of my time on the expo hall with the technology companies yeah. because of the work that i do yeah. but uh it was really great to connect with timber tech i think that that was the the booth that we spent probably the most time yeah. at well that was not technology, but um, there was quite a few booths giving away socks mm -hmm. this year. Got it. Got quite the sock collection oh, this year. Right, you know, I should have had my socks um, right. ready. <laughs> Nobody wants to see your feet. No, no, I'm not having them on. Just hold them up. Say, look at my. No, look, I need to do laundry. Very flashy, flashy. Arc I mean, I think that's a that's a pretty good idea. You know what? I don't know. Those uh, SketchUp's been doing it forever, but architects do like their architects their fancy like socks, their funky socks. So. And you know, funky and, socks. <laughs> Vector works. They brought out a really good one. Um, uh, Autodesk, you need to step your game up. Nobody likes lemon. Lime. They definitely do. Those were boring. Right, right. You got the, you know, the SketchUp socks were good. SketchUp the socks, were, socks you know, were good. Great. The Slantis. Slantis, the Slantis socks, were great. socks were good. There were a few that I missed yeah. that were, that I saw some of them. Like, Where'd you get those? But, um, you know, <laughs> Who knew you could walk away from the I AIA had, conference with I did, like $50 yeah. dollars in socks? I, I yeah. didn't need to do any sock <laughs> shopping. No, no, no. These are like, you know, these are like $25, you know, a pair, like single pair of socks, man. Uh, that's that's cause ridiculous. Funny enough, I was just in Target <laughs> looking at just like funky socks and they were like 22 bucks a pop. I'm like, why? Well, that's crazy. Who spends that kind of money on socks? Yeah. I don't Jeez. because I get them all for free at an AIA conference. Right. Right. Which was just great. Yeah. So after the expo hall, there were various dinners and things going on and there was various meetups and things happening with, with a lot of different yeah. people that we've known forever. I think that's one of the coolest things. And we've definitely talked about that in the past about going to a conference like this. Really the reason is to go to meet up with mm -hmm. the people who you've been hanging out with, yeah. but you don't get to see except for once or twice right, a year right. at a show like this. So that that's the real reason to go. Uh, it's not to get CEUs and it's not to <laughs> sit in any. any of these booths. And yeah, it's, it's, it's to talk. Yeah. You definitely don't need any. It's definitely to, to meet with your, with your people and uh, get, get some photos with people and go, go see architecture with people and hang out it was yeah it was it was very cool and the next day was was the day that we skipped out 
and went and looked at some incredible. Uh, I mean, yeah. we're in Washington D.C. I mean, there was all of these architectural there's a couple tours, things. and by the time we got the right. opportunity to sign up for them, they were all sold out. And so while we were sitting there in the pre-happiness keynote, the our friend was just like, "There's only one building that I really want to see," and look it up and find out that of all of the days that we were in town, of all of the times and everything right. else, everything was was completely booked up except for noon on the next day for three people. And that's all we were looking for. So it was just like absolute fortuitous luck that I pull up right. the uh, app to go to the National Museum of African American National Museum of History and Culture. And I don't know if I got the name right, but um, it's a long it's name. A long name. Yeah, it's a mouthful. And we scored the last three tickets. Again, see, getting you guys all these free tickets and stuff, and nobody bought me anything from the gift shop. I still don't understand why. Like, I mean, sure, they were free tickets, but still, you could have, you know, tipped me or something. I mean, something. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> They all were free this tickets, but yeah, you did. You you all you, this you did the effort. <laughs> the gas to get you there wasn't free. <laughs> but anyway, so um, anyway, so we go there and luck into some pretty good parking, really really close. Get to walk, do a little bit of walk on the mall, right on up to the Washington, you know, monument, on into the museum just in time so we didn't have to like dilly dally i mean we literally just got there right in time to like walk right, right on in get out of the stifling yeah. hot swamp swamp air and yeah. and i i, I want it because of somebody who's been there a lot i'm curious what your impression of the museum was because I, I honestly okay so i've been to quite a few museums over the years over the decades in washington dc but it's been a while <laughs> since i've been in one this this building is absolutely incredible. I cannot believe how much it has going on yeah. and how clean and detailed it came out because I mean it kind of has mm. to it seems like in its location and of, of its stature and who was involved with the design and the execution of yeah. all that, right? Um it is so well done. Yeah. I mean, that to me, I, I took a lot of pictures from afar, yes. but you, I could have just as easily so, taken pictures up close. Yeah. And I was paying attention to those things, like just the way that that steel spiral stair goes up. There's no yeah. apparent supporting structure, and it's got these, you know, half inch thick steel panels that wrap it with these half inch gaps between the steel panels. The precision. Is incredible, like, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and that to me is <laughs> we don't get to see that working on K twelve projects right, right. ever, right? But the the level of execution in the actual build by the contractor is is incredible. So there's obviously the detailing to get it to that point and figure it all mm -hmm. out, but then there's the actual materials and the assemblies and the way that they were executed is another level oh, yeah. like you yeah. just don't get to experience things like that very often and i i have no idea what the budget was on that project and how far over budget i assume <laughs> just because architecture yeah but it's like though the budget is just incomprehensible to me as a as a when i was practicing architecture right. i can't even imagine what what that building ended up at but that's what it pays for like that's this is what you get and this building gets so much traffic right. there were you know they 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 put you in time slots and tickets so that they can maintain the correct capacity for right. the building right. there were a lot of people there and this building sees that many people most of the time every single day yeah. right and for it to like so it's just it and, it's so durable it is so well done it's just one of those things where it's like you can't even tell yeah. that it's that it gets that much traffic because it, it doesn't really wear it's not wearing out. I know it's not that right. old, but it's of the it's of the caliber of the other monuments and buildings that we see yeah. in Washington yeah. D.C. But it's it's a new addition, and there there's way more materiality in this building than there are in many of the other ones. And uh, to me, I mean the the material choices, the light, the skin, the core, 
the the transition of space and like i think i this is a building you can easily get disoriented in because there's so many twists and turns along the experiential path from the bottom to the top you know we we decided to go down to the bottom and then work our way up through the multiple floors and there's escalators and there's ramps and they're curving and turning and doing this and that and then there's some i kept thinking about it in section and how complex it is in section like those you know, they they weren't closed in theaters as we were going up the right. ramp, and you're kind of like moving laterally and vertically, and then you get another theater, and then there's another theater, and it they're showing stuff up on the walls, and they're pr- using projection and lighting, and we had a conversation about the lighting alone, right? right? And just how right. the lighting design in this museum is absolutely incredible, yeah, uh, just so well done. Um, I don't know. I, I could go on and on and on and on. There was just so many things in that com- contemplative garden, oh, like yeah. the the waterfall through the Oculus, and like that space that's underneath the plaza in front of the building. And how, there's so many things like that experientially that I just were very very meaningful and, and so well done. Big that space really was. When you look at the yeah. when you look at the museum, and it doesn't really look as big as it actually is because there's a lot that's underground. Right, it doesn't. You, I would have never expected it to feel that expansive. Exactly. Right. It, it, okay, so so here's a here's an analogy that just came to mind. It's like going into an IKEA, yeah. where it's like this. This won't take long. We'll be in and out, and then before you know it, it's a time it's warp, a, and it took you four hours to get through where did it. Time go? That's what this is yeah. like, except way yes, nicer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but you can't get meatballs there. <laughs> there were no meatballs. <laughs> Man, like what a yeah. highlight! What what an absolute architectural treat to to visit that. And, and I know, like like there was there was a model there that we yeah. got to see, and there was some photos like th- in the design process and some sketches. Right. But you know, seeing Phil Freelon and David Ajay kind of like you know doing their thing, working. You know, maybe it was a photo op, but doing their thing. I mean that that I can't even imagine how much effort yeah. went into creating a building. But like hopefully, that. how much capital fun a, too? Capital A architecture. Yeah. Yeah, and so then it would have been like I can't even imagine that design process and be like, "We're gonna do what? You mean we get to do what? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, and and like just feeling like you're getting away with stuff because it was it's that yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So then the uh, one of our one of our fan favorite uh, museums on the mall is the Air and Space Museum. However, the Air and Space Museum on the mall it's under a major renovation. It was still open but it was greatly diminished in the exhibits that were going on, the wings that were closed and things like that. And you're like, oh, I really, you know, I kind of want to go there. I'm like, no, you want to go. Well, you asked me earlier, because Brett said, I only want to see the one thing. And I'm like, I want to see two things. I want to see the yeah. African American History Culture Museum. And I want to see, I want to go to the right. Aerospace Museum. And I'm like, well, we're going to go to the other one. And you're like, the other one. I was like, there's another one? What are you talking so, about? There's more than one Air and Space Museum in Washington, yes, D.C.? They're, and they're both the same Air and Space Museum, just in two locations. Always have been, or right. at least, like, one, because the collection is so vast. Obviously, the one on the mall, you can't yeah. contain everything there. And when, so we made the drive out to right outside of Dulles Airport, is the other, the Udvar Hazy wing of the Air and Space Museum. And it, because of the way that it's laid out, and again, I was just, I, I was, because it's my favorite museum to go to, to take the kids there and all of that other stuff. And I love both Air and Space Museums, but there was just something about the one out in Virginia that I was like, You've, you, you guys have got to see this one. And it was like the way that they staged it, the way that they kind of presented this very specific they curated so cool. this view this 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 kind of procession once you come in the front doors there's this procession you see like you start to feel this excitement of like what you see and as you get closer the excitement just keeps unfolding more stuff to keep looking at and it's just like like and that to me is always the thing and so when you said you want to see the air and space museum and me knowing some of your favorite airplane that Mm-hmm. I was excited to kind of like just say, all right, get out of here. And, and, and it paid awesome. off. It, 
it paid off. It delivered. I mean, and I think what's so interesting about that is a <clears throat> completely different style of museum, yeah. Yeah. right, than what we had just experienced at the African American History Museum. And it was like, it's just like a giant yeah. hangar, right? And so now it becomes all about, okay, so how do you create an experience in just like one big space, right? Very different, like sectionally, mm -hmm. very little you can do right. sectionally. Like there's no... There, there's no, you go down into this dark room and then it, it blows up into this. No, it's just like one giant hangar. And what they were able to do with this is still like, it makes for a great experience to your point about the, like the way that it unveils some of my favorite things to, to look <laughs> right. at in the whole world. Right. right. <laughs> but it, but it, but the way that they, they bring you in on the upper level and obscure the view so that when you get to the precipice of the mezzanine it just is like boom and it and it's laid out in front of you right down the middle on the central axis that goes back to the space shuttle right. discovery yeah. right all the way in the back and that that's kind of what's exactly. drawing you yeah. in and I, and I like how you kind of you you brought that up right it's like it's like you see this thing down there and it's white and it's bright and it's like lit and because your eye is drawn to it with like this forced perspective of the building, but also just the railings and the walkways and everything and the color, it definitely, it, it just prioritizes your attention right. that, okay, that's where I'm supposed to go. Right. And this is something that architecture does that normal buildings right. don't do. Right. They, they, you take all this into account and it sucks you in and then you get to this, you didn't even know that there was going to be a lower level first time right. visitor, right? And 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 it's just like boom, there's the SR seventy one Blackbird so, below, and it's hey, lined Andy, up perfectly on axis yeah. with yeah. Hi, I was waiting for you exactly. <laughs> but it's also framed diagonally by two of the most pivotal aircraft of World War Two, the War U Corsair and the P fifty one Mustang, right. the main. Yeah, they're yeah. kind of like in dogfight exactly. kind of angle main coming in. Main aircraft of the Navy, and main aircraft of the yes. Army and, you know, Air Corps. And then, and so, like, you sort of see them, that, and they frame out the view of the shuttle. And so you, but you're so background. focused on the shuttle as you're walking by, you don't really pay attention to them. But as you're getting closer, you start to see them get closer to you. Then, you know, that's when right. then you start to realize, oh, wait, there's a lower level. And that lower level opens up and then... Now you're in this like axial view of these World War II aircraft, SR-71 and the shuttle. And then as you're standing there, that's when you start to see the breadth of this whole entire space. You've got all of like the Cold yep. War. That's when your peripheral vision yeah. kicks in and you just, you look left and you look right and it, and it just opens up in both directions. Then you've got the Enola Gay right. there and you've, oh my gosh, just, you've got fighter planes and... Yeah. And it's like, oh, we're going to be here yeah, for a exactly. while. Like, <laughs> like, we're, so this is what we're doing today. Because we're not doing anything else. Yeah. I mean, oh. that was absolutely incredible to see all that under, basically under one yeah. big roof. Yeah. And, and it is neat how they have these kind of different levels. So you can experience these from other angles than just the yeah. ground, yeah. right? Like what's, what's neat is you, you get the ground level scale mm. experience of these airplanes, but then they also have these stairs and ramps and, and overlooks. So you can see them from all the, all the angles you want to see them from, because there's, there's just so many Cat, different things to look at. Catwalks that cool. you're eye to eye with, you, you see when you're at ground level right. and you're looking up and you see these aircraft hanging from the structure and you're like, oh, those are great. But then there's like catwalks um, that bring you up and you're yeah. staring eye to eye with them and you're like, oh, that's how big they really are. You know, and then you're seeing all of these different things from multiple different perspectives all the way throughout from the ground level, from up above, looking down at them. I mean, you know, it's a well done for such a very simple building and such a very simple move between the exhibit designers and the architects, it's just very well done, very simply curated, but very impactfully curated museum. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And then in the back, in the back. Yeah. For, in the back. For, for the, for the, for the nerds, <laughs> the, the workshop. Oh my gosh. Just yeah. so cool to see the, 
the things they're working on and the process, you know, at the point at which in the yeah. timeline of each one of those projects they're on, you, you can just, like, it's just there to see. And you're up in this bird's eye view mm -hmm. looking into the restoration area, the actual workshop. And there's a wood shop and a steel shop, and they've got all these projects laid out, and there's there's fuselage and wings and they're stacked on racks and it, all the tools are out and uh, I just really appreciate that they actually show that part of it because I imagine that that they don't have that in the Smithsonian Not Air and the, Space the, on yeah, the mall no. maybe they do no. but but I mean it, I mean they're out by an airport they've got this giant expanse of a museum and they've got this huge shop and then they've got I'm sure a lot more collection storage and stuff that you don't even see as another well, part of the building. So you're so lucky cool. that you're talking to me in the firm who is doing all of their collection storage. Um, you know, has you know some. I'm going to need to see those drawings. Yeah. No, you know you're not. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I'm sure the drawings are pretty boring because the drawings probably don't have all the planes yeah. in them. Anyway, that's what I really want to see. But it, so, it is kind of yeah, exciting to really just cool. kind of like you know be able to like work on it and stuff and. I don't know if it takes the little bit of the luster off of it when you're like working on these projects, but since I'm not working on them, the luster's still there. I love that place. Yes, yeah, right. And then the whole time, so you know, cool. you're sitting there and there's a certain perspective where you can see outside and you can kind of like look beyond and you can see Dulles sitting there. So you see the Saren in and it's just this nice little collection of these amazing Piece, these amazing artifacts that have had pivotal roles in human history or at least contemporary human history right. to this beautiful piece mm -hmm. of work off in the distance. And it was just another bit of framing as well. So cool. That was the highlight for me yeah. that day was getting away from the conference. Yeah. And What's your favorite part of yeah. uh, the conference? Getting away from it? Being a tourist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that, that really speaks to kind of the benefit of location of yes. these conferences yeah. and getting to see a different thing in the different places, but some are better than others yeah. by far. Right. Um, so I don't get the chance to go to DC very often. So I felt like this was, this was great. And then next year it's going to be in mm. Boston, which I've never been Ooh. to Boston, um, ever. So that Fun. might be, might be worth making a trip for as well. Yeah. Um, We've been a couple of times, but you know, I am going to look forward to a lot of like guided tours and, and things like that. Um, my wife said she wants to film. Okay, all right. Oh, nice. You know, I don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what you're getting into, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> cool. Nice. Well, was there anything we missed? I'm sure I, there I, was. I, and to, sorry to yeah. those who we did miss. I mean, we talked to a lot of people on the floor. We met up with a lot of friends. Didn't get a chance to meet up with other friends. Because they were just as equally busy and shuffling around and everything else as well. Because it, it was, it seemed to me like it was a really, really busy, like we were always doing something. Like we never really had time. Well, that's the thing, right? Is there's, everything is competing for a very limited yeah. time slot. Yeah. Right. And so, pick, and I, I feel like. This, this might sound stupid, but it's like intuitively, what which one do I want to go to right now? Because there are so right. many options, right? And so there's very much a just like, well, let's just see where the wind blows right. Right. and and we'll figure it out as we go because there are way too many options. Right. Uh, and, and not not to try to make it sound like it's it's a popularity contest at all. It's not like it's it's just like. There's literally too many things going on all the time, and you just have to pick yeah. one and go to it. And it may not be the right one, but it, you know, I, I feel like I, we did pretty well. And what's funny is like you know, because I never really think of like all of the architecturally significant buildings in um, DC, because in a way they're all architecturally significant buildings or historically significant There's buildings. There's so many. Or you know, it's just like hey, yeah. let's ditch all of this and go on the John Wilkes Booth Trail. We'll start at for theater and then we'll do this and then we'll do that. And then there's like all of that stuff that you could do. Or there's, you know, it's like, hey, right so down the much. road is a right house. And next to that is Mount Vernon. Why don't we go do that? All of this stuff yeah. was so close. So there's. Or the yeah, battlefield. Or, or, you know, there's. Or yeah, me, there's like I wanted to, to get you out to the Glenstone Museum because you've heard me 
rave on about that too. And I've heard you go on and, and on, on and, and on, on and, and, and it's well worth it. But <laughs> there was a lot of other things that were well worth it too. And so I think I think all overall though I had quite a action pack, exciting, and and very very good conference. I mean, there's yeah. there was. A lot of the, a lot more that I could have done, but I don't think that I would have been able to like mentally survive at all because it was just like there was it was exhausting, or physically, or physically either. I mean, it's just I yeah. mean we we did like twelve thousand steps a day, and and you're still sitting around a lot in a car, and you're and so just yeah. the amount of walking and that you're doing is just I mean bring the bring the bring the comfy yeah. shoes. This is what this always. is what I always tell people when they come and like they go and visit DC is just like. Oh, what can I see? It was like, strap yourself in because they fit that. Yeah, I was going to say strap yourself in. <laughs> there is so much that you can see. Here's, you know, it's like, yeah, multiple yeah. visits, multiple yeah. weeks. It's like Disney. Yeah. It's like, you don't do all sure. of Disney in one day because that's just insane. I mean, you could, but did yeah. you really enjoy it? Take your time, slow down, take a deep breath. Yeah. Hopefully, not walk past a. Well, I. I Anyway, I'll leave that one. I was gonna say I put up a f I put up a few posts on Instagram, so I'll put a put a link to those yeah. in the show notes. But um just of, of some of the things that we talked about. And today. I haven't but I haven't was... yet, but um I think once we start, you know, posting this episode I'll have stuff up. Um I've got so many photos on my phone and camera to curate through for the trip that I took just before the AI convention and then the trip, you know, and then the AI convention. We talk about that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we gotta talk about, we'll that. Talk about that. And public thank you to Cormac Phelan for his amazing uh, tour guide. And he, he just, as always, you just do the thing. It, you do the thing. You know the you know the places. Yeah. You know where to go. You know how to do it. I it, 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 it I honestly incredible. enjoy doing so. that. But now, I need to take all of that money that you guys you know will give me, and go out and get one of those little duck buses. <laughs> He do, yeah. <laughs> do the, you do the hold out the duck hat. tours. Do the collections. Do the duck tours. But I'll do a coast to coast duck tour. Well, well, cheers, man. I appreciate it. Um, you're an excellent tour guide, especially in your old stomping yep. grounds. So it was it was really fun. It's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.